Today's episode of This Week in Startups is brought to you by Hiscox. Go to hiscoxusa.com slash smallbiz for your business insurance needs. And by GoToMeeting. Sign up for GoToMeeting today by using promo code START to begin your free trial. Uh, today, today, we've got an amazing episode. Five entrepreneurs are going to enter the Shark Tank, Jason Shark Tank, not the Mark Burnett Shark Tank, and pitch me their ideas. And I've got Tyler here who's going to give them some feedback as well. Stay tuned. It's all about man. They said, money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Yeah. Money is the root of all evil. What? Funny how it feeds my people. Yeah. We ain't gonna live like equals until we get the money, spend the money, and defeat you. Ah, uh, hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to This Week in Startups. You know, we used to do this segment, Shark Tank, which was based on the Mark Burnett show uh, or the launch conference. You know, it's a basic general idea of somebody pitching, uh, doing an elevator pitch. Because as you guys know, I was asked to be on Shark Tank like two or three times. They called me, and then at the last minute, they, they never called me back. But I'm not bitter. I have my own television show. What do I need them for? And I've got all you guys watching. So today, we're going to have five amazing back-to-back -back pitches. And Tyler and I are going to rate them and score them. And you're going to learn two things. One, how to pitch. Two, uh, just what is a good idea and, and what makes a good idea and how a good idea could get better. So this is a really great clinic-type episode where you're going to have five entrepreneurs pitch their ideas. We're going to bring up their product. They're going to have 60 seconds. And then we're going to give them very specific feedback on everything from how they did as a pitch how scalable the business is, their branding, all this great stuff. The examples they give, they give during the program. And you know, Tyler, uh, who's here with me, and I have personally sat with well over 500 startups over the last four years and taught them how to pitch properly. And Tyler is actually the pitch doctor. You really are the pitch doctor now. You have like <laughs> yesterday, you came up and showed me a pitch from Startup Weekend. Did that, that blow you away? It was just like it's like you do it now, and it's almost like. It's like Bob Dylan getting up at the Newport <laughs> Folk Festival meeting, just like, hey, everybody, and they're all just salivating. You're just like, and it's just like, all their minds are blown. It's just like you've become mind-blowing in your ability to do it. OK, I'll take that as a compliment. Yes. Bob and, Dylan, that's pretty good oh, company. Oh, yeah, you are the Dylan of um, presenting this stuff. It's just it's like I get pins and needles when you pitch something. And hey, one of the great things that you're going to experience today is GoToMeeting, GoToMeeting. Uh, that is the service I use for my meetings, and it's all one flat fee for unlimited meetings. And they have now the ability to do HD faces. And we're going to show it to you live. Hey, let's just switch over real quickly and show my five pictures. There they are. Hey, guys, everybody wave. And look how beautiful that looks on HD faces. They're all, uh, it's a good looking group of guys. And uh, they're all going to be pitching. And if you want to uh, sign up for GoToMeeting right now, you will be entered into a drawing to win a free, free, 13-inch uh, MacBook Air, courtesy of Tyler Crowley, uh, as well as a Logitech HD camera, which is the one I use. That it's better than the one that comes in the uh, goddamn MacBook Air. They do, I don't understand Steve Jobs is like cheaping out on the camera, uh, but you need to get one of those HD cameras. So to join it, all you do is you go to go to meeting, you sign up using the promo code Start. When you get your email receipt, get your 30-day free trial receipt. You forward it to contests at thisweekin.com. It's that simple. You forward us that you have the receipt. That's your entry into Tyler Crowley's MacBook Air contest. You want one of these beautiful? Oh, they're machines. so good. The new ones that just came out are unreal. Even better. Yeah. Even better with the yeah. Thunderbolt. Yeah. How but does the Thunderbolt better. even? The, everyone's like, oh my god, it's got Thunderbolt. But I, is there anything you can plug I'm, into a Thunderbolt? I don't care about the Thunderbolt. Just the processor. The processor is like that. twice, as fifty percent yeah. faster. So it just, made, yeah. but it's already a ridiculously fast. Yeah, I, this I, I do. There's no. I have had no limitations on this machine. Yeah, it's an amazing machine. It's it's even better than the iPad. So anyway, sign up for uh, GoToMeeting, and you'll see us using HD Faces, their new software, today on the program as we do these pitches. Okay. So first up is Addison Hardy. Before we get started, yeah, I just want to throw out a little caveat. A little caveat. Yeah. You know, normally somebody's? when yeah. we do these, yeah. we're very, we take a positive tone. We, we do take a positive. We, we celebrate entrepreneurs. Yes, we're we fans. Be, you could say we're fans. We want to be positive. We want to be encouraging. Yes. Having said that, I'm in a feisty mood. You're in a feisty mood. So I'm. It's going to be particularly bottom line. 
type really? of delivery. Really? Are you, are you yeah. saying some people might... Um, there might be tears. There, 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 there will be blood? There will be tears. There will be tears. All right, well, there you have it, folks. Uh, Tyler's going to be uh, very critical, which is good, because we, we, if we're critical here, it's critical with it's good intent. It's tough love. It is it's definitely well-intended. Definitely well-intended. All right, so let's do it. Uh, first up is Addison Hardy. Addison, are you there? Yes. Oh, wow, perfect. Look how good you look. Wow, you're a good-looking young guy. How old are you? 20. 12 years old. 12 wow. years old, that's brilliant. Yeah. No, you're not 12, you're <laughs> 20. 20. No, uh, 20, yes. 20, you're in college. Uh, no. Not in college, okay. Where are you calling from? Wilmington, North Carolina. All right, from North Carolina. Did you get, did you get hit by the earthquake today? <laughs> I felt a little something, but not. It could Nothing have, serious. It might have been guess. Okay, so your company is Spoonfire.com. Uh, you know the rules. You have yes. 60 seconds to pitch us. Three, two, go. Okay, so Spoonfire is a really simple way to order food online uh, and on the go. Uh, we want to simplify things for both hungry consumers and also for the restaurants. Uh, so on the consumer side, uh, you can order from within Facebook, uh, on our website, and from mobile devices. On the restaurant side, we make it really easy to upload restaurants' entire menu in just a couple of minutes. Uh, it instantly pushes out to all of our platforms. And then the, the restaurants can receive their orders uh, via phone, text message, fax, email, or right on our dashboard on Spoonfire.com. And uh, we have no setup for monthly fees. We just charge a small fee on each order uh, to the restaurant. Okay. Wow. Done in 45 seconds. Um, let me, I, I pulled up Spoonfire here. You now can manage multiple restaurants from your Spoonfire account. And there's Jason's Steakhouse, I guess. And uh, I can add multiple restaurants. And I have a dashboard. And I guess I have a menu designer here. I could put in my items. Very good looking. Very simple design. Um, go back to the dashboard Thanks. here. Uh, recent orders. Uh, I can see the recent orders. I can see the statistics of uh, stuff going on. I can see the live menu and how it looks. Well, there you go. Um, and so this is what you say it is. It's an easy way for a business to make uh, an online menu ordering system. And yes. uh, this is something that I would think already exists, but I don't know that it does. I know there's a couple of restaurants like, oh, it certainly. There is a restaurant yeah. over here that we, um, Bay Cities, mm -hmm. you can order online. Sure. And a lot of businesses are starting to have this. Yes. But I wonder if they're rolling their own or they're using a service. I they're don't know. They're using services. They're, they are using services yeah. to do this. So this is an idea that's out there. Um, I felt your pitch was good. Uh, however, I would have liked to have had some statistics from an existing restaurant if you have a pilot. Wasn't clear if this is in the market or not. I would have liked to hear if there were competitors, okay. possibly. Um, and if so, okay. if there were competitors, how are you different? Um, how are you different? What, right? Yeah. What? What? What's the differentiator? Not so much. How are you different? But it's like. What are you recognizing that they're doing, and what do you see as the opportunity yeah, that they're not leverage? doing? Yeah, what's your leverage? You could say it as leverage, yeah. or you could say differentiation. Yeah. Different, differentiation. There's all different ways to right. say it, but the idea being, hey, let's not come into this meeting with an angel investor or you know somebody yeah. and and pretend that we're the first people to do this right. when we're probably not. Because in fact, if they're in your space, in some respects, you want them to do well. Definitely. It's not, uh, there it's are not several a, competitors. Yeah, that's an astute point, Tyler, right. because uh, demand media, which I've been criti critical of sure. some things in the past, you know, they're trading at like $600 million market cap. They're worth $2 billion. They had mm -hmm. a $25 share stock price that was yeah. $7 the other day, $8. Yeah. And people are like, oh, are you happy? I'm like, not happy at all. Right. It's better for me. They're worth $6 billion. It right. makes my whole look better. Billion. Yeah, yeah <laughs> please, for the love of God, let them, you know. But hey, you know, yeah. so you, you, nobody, um, just the point is, I think young entrepreneurs, Sometimes, well, it's just the point. Sometimes we'll say, I'm not going to bring up the competition because I don't want to open that Pandora's box. Yep. But the fact is, any sophisticated investor or partner or potential employee, the people you're trying to sell on your vision, mm -hmm. is going to, if they are in any way intrigued, go do research the second after your meeting. Mm -hmm. And when they find out that there's somebody out there who's doing this who has 80% market share or 8% market share and you didn't bring them up and their system's better, you look bad. You look bad. Better to put that stuff right up front. Yeah. A lot of people are trying to do this. And here's how we're better. So I give your pitch, which was not bad, um, but didn't have some critical features. I'm going to minus one or two point, one point for each of those two or three things. And I felt you didn't have uh, massive enthusiasm. So there was no personalization to the pitch. Another great thing you could have added was, I built this because my dad owns a restaurant, or 
my favorite restaurant down the block couldn't take my orders. And it was a pain in the neck to call. I hate talking to people on the phone. I have multiple windows open, multiple windows open on my desktop. I would rather just put this order in and not talk to somebody and do it in 15 seconds. I went down, I put it in his store. He loves it, I love it, and now it's same, great. Same with personalization to who you're pitching to. And in Jason's case, you know he likes um, Sushi. Cho no, chocolate um, croissants. And Wouldn't you like to just be able to click and get one? Pond chocolate, right. And you're like, Jason, you're, you, know, you know you like this, the bakery down the street. I mean, yeah. you can drill in. It's that, know your audience. Those, that's, those that's kind of things always like trigger a part of the brain that captivate them. That's what we would call like a kung fu high level totally. pitching technique, which is um, uh, incorporating the audience into the pitch. Correct. And it, it's just a classic yep. technique that we've come up with yep. and we've used yep. uh, to great, great effect. Yes. So if you know Tyler on his Twitter stream has checked into a place and you said, hey, Tyler, I saw you checked into this restaurant. Did you know they don't accept orders? If they accepted orders, would you order from them? Right. Well, guess what? I called the guy and I put him online. Or I just put him online. You know, uh, oh, you, you want to go to like black belt level right away. You do exactly that. You find out a, a, a place they know. Right. You say just what you said. Tyler, was Sushi King is the one you go to? So I go to Sushi King. You go to Sushi King with terrible name, great place. Right. And, you know, and of and so course. So they see you check in or I course, check into to Ichigo. Right. Well, but you say, yeah, we know they, uh, of course, they don't do online ordering, right? Mm hmm And so I spoke to Sushi King. Ah. Uh, right there. You, wow. Wow. Yeah. Why? Why wow? Why is that wowing? Because you're, you? you're, th you're just thinking, you know, this, that, that's what a real entrepreneur do. This dude is on. This is what. Mark Pincus does. This is yeah. what Elon Musk does. This is how those guys roll. So right. like when, you, when you see someone else exhibit those traits, you're like, this kid's on his game. Right. This right. could be a future visionary right. kind of guy. Right. 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 We didn't get that from the pitch. So I'm going to well, give the pitch a I'm seven. Just saying. Uh, what do you give the pitch? Uh, six, five. Six, five. So your, your pitch is pretty good. I mean, that's a pretty good place to start. Uh, Addison, don't feel bad about that. I think it's a pretty good place I, to start. I wish I was giving no, okay. 6.5 pitches when I was 20 right. years old exactly. in North Carolina. So now... Um, you were going to show me how this ordering works because there is a hook here, isn't there? Yes. Well, I did want to address uh, a couple of the things you brought up. Uh, there are several competitors on the market, uh, like Grubhub.com um, and Seamless. Uh, but we do have a couple features that they don't offer, uh, like Facebook integration. Uh, we're also integrating with Twilio uh, and allowing people. Uh, it basically generates the, the order call. So are you um, doing? Oh, wait, 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 wait. You generate the order call. What exactly does that mean? And is that something I can see here? Like, are you going to call? I, I know what he means. Let me, let me see if I guess this right. Okay, go ahead, Tell. So he says on his website, and you can pull up my screen if you like, that you can receive them as a, a you can receive these orders as a phone call, a fax, an email, or an SMS. Right? That's the oh, business can. Right. Oh, hold on. Let me, let me move my screen because there it is, the phone, right? Yeah. Right. So Zoom you choose how you want to receive it. Ah. So I kind of like this because... That's interesting. I didn't even, we didn't even really get into the business side of this. But you're saying the, the local business can get the, my order for chicken wings as an SMS message? Or as yes. a phone, or as a fax, or as an email. That's what wow. you're saying. Right. That's pretty dope. You have to offer that kind of flexibility because these people are like, yeah. ha have their proprietary way of how they like to do business. Yeah, yeah. Well, we do always do the facts. Right. We like right. the facts. We like the facts, right. Oh, no, yeah. that's good. We that's talked good. to a number of restaurants, and they all had a different way that's they right. wanted to get uh, orders. So that's we just right. did some alts. You're gonna ha and then you're going to have to do some of them by phone. The trick is, how do you go from mobile app to phone? Well, you can put in the phone number. But the other thing you could do is do Twilio. Uh -huh. which is actually right. surprisingly simple, and it'll trigger the phone call and place your order via Twilio. So say we oh. were going to demo that here on the yeah. show? Yes, uh, okay. I can demo that right now. Let's okay, go ahead. So, so I've created a restaurant called Jason's Steakhouse. I see it. Great place. And uh, uh, I can actually switch over and share my screen and show uh, the order. I would love to create Jason's Steakhouse. The only Oh, look at that. He's going to switch over. And he's going to show the order. Uh, I, I didn't know that in, uh, this is one of the great things about GoToMeeting is that the, the participant can actually then take control of the screen and then show his screen. Um, or you okay, just, so, yeah. Or if you just want it for expedience sake. Just, can you see my screen right now? Uh, no, but you may have it behind your current window. But why don't you just send the call? Go ahead and send it so we can get, keep the show moving. Oh, there it is. We can see your screen. Okay. All right, so there you go. Wow, look at, look at okay. GoToMeeting, huh? I like how you still see the face above it, too. It's I still cool. see his face, yeah. right. So that's inside of Facebook, I see. Yes. Okay. So, so uh, uh, I just ordered ahead. a couple of things. You ordered a couple of things. And I'm going to check out. Okay, you checked out. Boom. Okay. And some. Okay. 
Oh, and look at my phone is ringing here on my desk. Let's go to the studio cam. Any super call? Okay, so I'll just hit my speakerphone here. God, I love the fact that we Have can do all this stuff. Have a fire order. Oh wow. The order is for Addison, and their number is nine one nine five 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 five. The order is one spoon fire sampler. One spoon fire sampler. One New York slice with cheese, and that's all for this order. Thanks for using Spoon Fire. We'll repeat the order until you end the call. Well, that's you cool. have a new Spoon Fire order. The order is for Addison, and their number is 919-555-555. Holy cow! Uh, I love that. The order is one Spoon Fire sampler. One Spoon Fire sampler. One New York slice with cheese. So and wait, wait, when you, it said order. twice, one spoon fire Thank sampler, one spoon fire sample. Does that mean two spoon fire samplers? We'll repeat the order. This is like Blade Runner. Two, two, yes. one, one, four. Two for <laughs> order. <laughs> the order is for Addison, and their number is. All right, is I gotta hang up, hang up. Okay. So what are you saying? Did I order two spoon samplers or one? Right, uh, you ordered two, and the reason for that is just uh, a lot of them told us it was easier to process the order uh, if they just repeated uh, the items like that instead of just saying two. Ah, I would, I would it's like to, easier uh, to engineer. Yeah, it's easier. Sure. Well, and it also might be easier for them to hear on the other line, like one vanilla shake, mm -hmm. one cheeseburger, one vanilla shake, mm -hmm. one chicken sandwich. Mm -hmm. You know, like well, especially if they're button triggered. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, okay, well, this is great. I think the business has great potential. It's you're going to be coming into a crowded market where it's, people are. It's a, it's brutal. It's brutal. And you're selling to a customer who gets, who has, grinds their teeth when they pick up the phone and they hear someone trying to sell. I mean, they just all day long. All day long, are, people selling into those little businesses. Yes. So um, it, and it, how do you charge? You charge a dollar per order. You charge uh, fifty dollars a month. Uh, just, software as a service. What do you charge? Uh, we have no fees, monthly fees, or setup fees. Uh, we charge 10% uh, of each order. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it? Yeah, you have to, because you can't. these people don't want to give any fees for anything. Got it. And now, do you handle right. the um, actual billing as well? Is that the uh, idea here? Yes. Oh, wow. So, they, so basically, and how quickly do they get their money? Uh, well, actually, right now, uh, we're just supporting uh, pickup and delivery orders uh, where people are paying with cash or with pickup with card. Oh, got it. Um, so you all integrate some kind of payment system? PayPal, yes. Amazon payment, Google checkout. See, now my advice for you, Addison, is uh, being that you're in Willington, Willington, Wil North Wil Carolina is. You Wil need to Wilmington. Wilmington. That's where they film a lot of movies. I actually, have two I ideas. Yeah. Yes. This is your first company. They what? filmed Cape Fear there, actually. Yeah. Oh, is that where Cape filmed? Yep. Cape was Cape Fear filmed there, the original. Yep. I've there? been to Wilmington. You've been to Wilmington. I have. Yeah. Huh. Um, so this is your first startup, or is this your fifth? What is it? I know you're 20, so you probably have three startups on your. Yes. Level. First. Uh, this is my first. Okay. Now, have you ever worked for a company before? Have you ever worked? Yes. So you, you, you have a job currently? Are you employed? Uh, no. Uh, I had a job prior to starting up Spoonfire, uh, but right now um, I'm working on it full time. You are the developer? You wrote all this code? Yes. All right. I have two ideas for you. Number one, um, get the hell out of Wilmington. No offense to Wilmington, but... Uh, somebody who's this ambitious and this young and who has done something to this level, mm -hmm. you need to be in the Valley, Boston, New York, or Los Angeles, or Boulder, and you need to join Techstars or Y Combinator or one of these things or just go straight to Angelus because this is an incredibly well done product. I am very impressed that a 20-year-old can put this together. Um, Thank you. Not surprised, but impressed. Uh, now, that alone does not make you successful, uh, Addison. Um, you gotta, Absolutely. Starting is easy. Finishing is hard. So you've started, you've done the easy part. Finishing means you get people to pay for this goddamn thing. You get, you make a business out of it. You get 10, 20 people working for you. You raise a little angel investing. You sell it. You get yourself a Tesla. That's finishing. I need you to finish. That's the next piece of the puzzle, Addison. And I have an idea here. I think okay. that you should sell this company. And you should sell yourself for $250,000 uh, and an employment contract to Squarespace. Because I'm a fan of Squarespace. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking that either Squarespace uh, or Foursquare uh, would love to have you come work for them. And I think that this is such a good execution that this would be an amazing thing for Foursquare to offer through their app. Or for Squarespace to offer, like, hey, Squarespace has all these galleries. Like, they've focused on photographers. Well, why the heck aren't they focusing on local businesses and having an ordering system built in? It's just a plug-in. Yeah. You know? The good news is there's 
lots of players in this space. That's why it's so crowded. Yeah. And I don't mean exactly what he's doing, although there is. There's lots of people that, big companies that sell to retail, like yeah. restaurants and whatnot. The POS systems are the real big players in that game. Yeah. In terms of tech, and they have their own conferences. Those that the POS players. It's so crowded that they're looking to get into other new kind of. What about like Jack? This. You think Jack from Square would be into this as well? I'm making a list here. I'm. All right. Hey. He, he's, uh, he's, he's got the world at his feet. Car Carolyn, uh, let's make sure that I do an email intro for Addison if he wants it to uh, Jack from Square, uh, Dennis from Foursquare. Um, who else? Absolutely. Squarespace. Uh, Anthony over at Squarespace. I, I think you got him. I had somebody I else. think he needs to put a nice okay. deck together with some data before. No, I don't know. I think you send this video clip and you show this and you just show his work. I mean, I think this is an accu hire. I think you need to. I, I think that. I mean, do you want to just run your own company or do you want to, like, maybe be part of something bigger and try to, you know, uh, learn from another entrepreneur? Where do you think you're at in your career? Uh, I think I don't know at this point in uh, my life, but I'm, I'm open to anything. Yeah, so uh, what you need to do is, as a young person, um, if you come across as wishy-washy, people are not going to like it, but if you come across as confident and you know what you want, uh, you're going to have a lot more opportunity. So what I would say is, you should tell the people you're meeting with, I want to do one of three things. One, I would love to be part of Techstars or uh, Y Combinator uh, or f what's the one in um, Austin? That's really good. The Austin or Betaworks. I want to be part of an incubator because I need a co-founder and I need help and I want to learn. Number two, I would consider just doing a straight angel investment, but I do need to have you know a little bit of uh, folks around me to help me grow this. So uh, there's that. Or I wouldn't even consider being hired to do this project inside of a bigger organization. And I think you should come to the the, the two best ones for you is I, you're gonna have a hard time raising angel investing. I think not impossible. But one of those two others, being part of an incubator like Betaworks, John Borthwick would be a great one, uh, or on the other side, uh, joining a Techstars or whatever. It's a really good possibility for you. So anyway, uh, you make your own luck, Addison, and your luck just went way up because you made a great product. Congratulations. I give the business on itself an eight. I think it's a good business, seven or eight. I know it's competitive, Thank but it's, I think it's a good way to get into the market, maybe even offer it for free and just let people use it for free and then find something else to upsell them on. I don't know. Um, what do you think, okay. Tyler, the business, it's, 1 to 10? It's an incredibly intensive sales-driven business, and the, the, I think the kind of dirty secret in this game is, is because the, the, the client base you're selling to is so hard to sell to conventionally, you have to have an, an incredibly elegant product that they themselves are selling to each other, because they all know each other is the benefit. So if the yeah. product is amazing, then it'll sell itself. But the, this would be an amazing extension for Yelp. They're already in local business. They tell them, hey, you want to have ordering through Yelp? Why doesn't Yelp do ordering? I don't know. That's a no-brainer. Jesus. There's a fit there, but... Um... You, you have Yelp, you have Foursquare, you have Squarespace, and then you have Betaworks, Techstars. I mean, all these possibilities. Yeah. Okay, Addison, great job. I, give, I, give it a, I'm, I gave you a 7 and an 8. Tyler gave you a 6.5. And on the business side, you give? 7. 7. Okay. So, you listen, what that means is you're in the game, buddy. Good job. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot. Okay, everybody check out Spoonfire, and if everybody wants to help him out, uh, go ahead and tweet uh, good job, Addison of Spoonfire.com on your Twitter account. Maybe send him a little traffic. Okay, uh, great job. Let's get the next caller set up. The next caller is going to be Julian Shapiro. Uh, he's the CEO of Name Lair, and he, uh, I see we have a screen sharing. Hey, he's uh, calling from Hollywood, and Name Lair was launched August 5th, 2010. Uh, and it's a domain inventory that sells company names, one fourth. One. Okay, well, so it's well, a domaining company. One other thing about yep. Spoonfire is somebody, actually Mark Suster gave me this advice uh, before doing Squeal, and it was the best advice I ever got, mm. which was the people who manage restaurants and own restaurants, uh -huh. these are people who don't know what a reply all field is in email. Right. They don't know what a CC field is. They're busy running their businesses. They don't know what the tab key is on the keyboard. That's yeah. literal. This is actual, that's real. That was a support call. So at least it wasn't the any key. <laughs> That's the most famous tech support call. Hit any key. I can't find the any key. I've been looking for an hour. <laughs> so um, d designing products for those folks is actually incredibly challenging because they don't know elementary stuff that you would normally, and most engineers are just going to assume. So yeah. there's a huge 
Men, there's yeah. a huge gap. Okay, yeah. so uh, hey, before we get to hear about this name layer, which I'm particularly interested in because you know I love a good domain name, let me uh, take a minute to thank Hiscox. Hiscox focuses on insurance for professional service providers and startups, that's us. It's not a one-size-fits-all process. You only pay for coverage you need. Hiscox is how Tyler is uh, now insuring himself, and he went through the process and got it done in five, 10 minutes. Yeah. Coverage starts at just twenty-two fifty a month, and let me tell you something, every business, if it reaches any level of success or notoriety, will be sued. Just watched our last sued. couple episodes, yeah. <laughs> the last couple of episodes, it's like everybody telling their horror stories. Hiscox believes in transparency because they're very confident. All the reviews, negative and positive, are posted online. And over 96% of customers say they would recommend Hiscox to a colleague. That's why they were allowed to become a partner yeah. of This Week in they're, Startups. They're very specifically for exactly the type of people watching this show and ourselves are doing small startups. Not, small this startups. is not for... You know, they're if not, you got 500 people, you know, there right, might be some no. different solution for you. This, this hey, is a solution everybody for everybody go to hiscoxusa.com slash smallbiz to get a quote. Thank you, Hiscox, for saving our asses over and over again. You know, you really want to protect yourself and protect your intellectual property and protect your company and protect your employees and protect your shareholders. This is just basic 101. Julian, are you on the line? I'm on the line. How's it going? It's going great. I see a black screen. Um, I'm not sure what I'm looking at it, but uh, Julian, you're calling from Hollywood, That's California. That's right, a few miles away. Just a few miles away from sunny Santa Monica. Uh, and uh, you know the rules, so you have 60 seconds. Three, two, go. NameLayer is a domain inventory created specifically for tech company names. Today, company names are no longer chosen. Instead, they're the result of a process of elimination. Buyerscour, Cedo.com's massive database looking for the best domains they can find, given a set of keywords. Then most domain owners ask for inflated prices because they're waiting for big paydays, and those are the ones who bother responding. NameLayer solves the domain finding and the domain pricing problems by doing two things. First, by curating a small inventory of around 200 domains at one time, we provide startups with premium names that they can go through in under one hour they no longer need to rely on brainstorming keywords. Second, we price our domains at one quarter of their market value, resulting in average prices of between one and $3,000, which means that bootstrapped entrepreneurs don't have to break the bank. Example domains include monochannel.com, zensale.com, and toyset.com, and we add more every week. Okay, great, um, well done, I like the concept. Uh, what basically is happening here, if I may summarize the idea, sure. is, um, hey, you have big, open, huge networks like Sado. Mm -hmm. What a pain in the ass. There are mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of domains. It's overwhelming. <clears throat> but what if somebody said, hey, let me find out what domains are out there, and uh, I'll organize them into entertainment and gaming, analytics and finance, art and design, and you can just say, hey, I want to look at the ones that are, I'm going to do content publications, entertainment and gaming, and I'll leave off everything else. And what we are re left with in this nice, very clean, uh, easy to use interface is uh, Think Cuisine. Note Sing, Bomb Clock, Gear File, Audio Query, Bass and Ball, Type Hammer, Tune Hype, Tech Spark, Opinionism, Audioist, Send Play. Uh, it seems like you've taken some of the uh, basic domain uh, playbook stuff that I've talked about before, putting two words together to create a new word, uh, also known as a compound word, obviously I created that, uh, and uh, putting in a suffix or prefix, a prefix on something, all these great things, uh, and then putting it in a nice clean price, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand. Prices that somebody should, who is a uh, running a company should find quite accessible. AudioS for four thousand seems pretty reasonable. Uh, and I'm assuming that you register all these domain names yourself, correct? You own Correct, them. yeah. Yeah, correct. Uh, They're all ours. Yes. They're so what broken. you've done is uh, you've, you've created your own little curated network of clever domain names. I love the idea. Mm -hmm. This is a business uh, that I love. This is a great pitch, uh, and uh, it's a great business. It's a small business. I think the, on a business level, it's a seven right now or an eight. It's a, it's a, it's a boutique business, mm -hmm. but I like it. Mm -hmm. I like the curation. Now, the pitch... Um, was good, little, but a little stiff. But it was stiff. There wasn't a lot of enthusiasm. Well, it's very scripted. You yeah, you, you practice with that. That made it like okay. It's safe. Safe. It was safe. Yeah. 
I'm going to go with safe. It was well done and safe. It was a little Japanese yeah. jazz, you know? Yeah. What I would like to have seen is a really compelling example mm -hmm. of somebody overpaying for a terrible domain name yeah. on Sado yeah. and you coming up with a better domain. Why would you spend $16,000 yeah. on audio-files.com when Audioist was available for 4000 on our survey? We have taken the time to think of creative names. It takes us hours and hours to come up with a good name. We're just passing that price along to you, which is essentially what you're doing. Yeah. I give exactly. the pitch a seven. I give the, yeah. I give the idea and the business a seven. I, know, I don't like to give sevens because I feel like when you give a seven, you're just telling people, okay, it's like giving a, a C or a B minus. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it wasn't a fantastic, inspiring pitch, but it wasn't right. bad. And it's not an inspiring, insanely awesome business, uh, but it's not bad. Right. So I'm left, now that I've talked myself in through it, underwhelmed, and I wonder if there was something on this that could have made me say, wow, Tyler, what did you think? Well, the first thing I would have done is, first of all, you're exactly right, and your premise is actually quite awesome. How I would have positioned this is, uh, we all are familiar with the pain of, you know, the pain point you were drawing to. It's just, you need, you need to get the, the listener of your pitch to mm -hmm. actually feel some of that pain. Like right. some, somehow trigger that in them. So like, you know, you could have called me out on squeal with my ridiculous spelling of squeal, right? And be like, <laughs> yeah. Right, and be like, you know, how, you know, think back to how hard you were looking for how many times, how many searches did you have to do before you did this or that? And like really get them in that mental state where they get frustrated and they're like, yeah, I'm frustrated. Okay, now here's, the, what's the solution? Here's the solution. And like with the, that, you know, release of, you know, it's, 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 story, it's kind of a story arc to it. You have to hit that climactic tension point and yeah. then deliver the... Well, I mean, the, and as I, we said to the previous caller, where is why you built it? Mm -hmm. Why, why, why? Mm -hmm. Why did you build it? Mm -hmm. Make it personal. Mm -hmm. And, kung fu idea, yeah. let's talk about the Tyler name. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, that's some kung fu, but the, uh, what I want, we delivered that on the last one, like the kind of personalization is a kung fu technique. Right, uh, the but other there was key, no personalization in this, the key, and there wasn't why did I build it, like the, your own personal story. That's fine, but the, the one that's unique to this is you, you're dealing with a real pain point that we've all experienced, but you didn't make me feel that pain point during the pitch. You just, you just assumed, ah, oh, let him imagine, he knows what that pain point is. No, right. let's go into that, let's try and get those chemicals going in that person's brain so they recall you how You want that empathy, that, you yes. want them to feel it yes. at that moment, so you yes. make that emotional connection. Yes. Hey, everybody in the chat room on uh, Ustream.tv uh, slash this week in, or thisweekin.com slash live, Ustream.tv slash this week in, or usually, I didn't this mean weekend.com slash live. Go in there and rate the uh, pitch yourself with a uh, one to ten. A good way to get I'm them. I'm looking at the Ustream, by a, the way, a not good, the Justin. A good way to get them in that mind state is to frustrate them and ask them, how many, Google, how many name searches did you do before you did this? Ah, how many Very hours true. did you Very waste? True. Yeah, how, how many name searches? Yeah. Because yeah. everyone's going to be like, oh, God, I did 50, 60. Now, do you do, a, uh, do you do any um, trademark uh, research on these domains as well? No, we don't actually. Uh, we leave it up to them. But um, the interesting thing actually about Twitter is that if anyone has claimed your username, uh, you can reclaim it based on their policies. And uh, we actually have a guide, though, on trademarking and how that can cause yeah. issues in the support section of our website. Tyler, give us your scores. Um, uh, yeah, on the pitch, it's, uh, it's actually pretty good. It's, it's in the seven range. Yeah. And on the... Are we doing idea? Yeah. Um, the idea is really cool. It's not market size aside. It's a I really like the cleverness of the idea. I've never heard. I've actually never heard this pitch before. No. So I, I'll give you a, a eight. A, I'm leaning eight five, eight 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 five. Okay, great. So you, you, uh, once again in the game. Yeah. Pretty high quality. And, I, and by the uh, way, ni the design. I actually really like design. The design. Super clean and nice. Yeah. Now, are you uh, you are a solo founder? Is that correct? Correct, solo founder. How old are you? I'm 22, and I'm working with my friend from college who met an economics class, and he handles support and operations, and I do the technology front end and back end. And what's your story? You're a, you're a developer? What did you go to school? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I went to UC Irvine, um, a designer programmer, and I've been basically just building, uh, building and selling spec websites since I was 15, and so this is my first uh, official you know, startup. All right, hey, Carolyn, bring this guy by for a coffee with Jason, okay? I want to meet this guy. Julian, can you got time to come have coffee with me? 
Oh, of course. Thank you so much. I love it. <laughs> Come on in. Let's let's talk. I got. You know why? Because I I got a lot of premium domains. I like this idea. Mm -hmm. This is an idea. Well, thank I you very about. much. I've always wanted to do a little domaining business. You know that, Tom. Mm -hmm. I don't know oh, why. You, you got some good ones. Yeah. And I also uh, people have the, don't. You have. That's a good. Big digits and and. I got about a million dollars in domains. Yeah, no, I know. I, I've, I've helped you register many a domain. There we go. <laughs> All right. Hey, good job, uh, Julian. I look forward to having coffee with you. Great job. Thanks, Let's guys. Go Appreciate on it to, so much. Um, our, I, I, we really, we're two for two right now. Both these guys are right in the game. Very impressed. Uh, obviously, these are big fans of This Week in Startups, and they've been listening and watching to, to the program and really getting good at this. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. The whole reason we do this program is because, God damn it, we love startups, and we love helping them, and we love learning. Tyler and I are on our own adventure. I'm doing all kinds of startups. You don't even know half of it. I'm angel investing. I'm starting companies. I'm struggling. I'm fighting. I'm right in the thick of it just like you guys. Tyler's in the thick of it as well. We love it. Let's do the next one. Let's do the next one. Who do we got next here? Armand, are you there? Armand. Armand. Yes. Armand. Yeah. Ah. It's a French name. Hi, ah, oui. Comment allez-vous? Oui, bien sûr. Ah, bien. Je vais très bien, et toi? Ah, bien, bien. Comme ci, comme ça. Um, okay. <laughs> so, uh, I, uh, I see I have a, uh, this is an iPhone app, iPad app. Yes. All right, let me see if I bring it up on my screen it's here with the fancy dancy TriCaster 850 Extreme, 40 dimes. Watch this, Ooh. people. Boom, boom. Hey, where's my uh, iPad? Did the cable get knocked out? Let me reset that. Hold on, guys. My cable may have gotten knocked out. Try now. Give it a second, every oh look at that, huh? So it's an iPhone app right now, but I'm showing it on my iPad, doubling it up. Uh, and the name of this yeah. app is yeah. called DidYouApp.com. Uh, Armand Conan. Yes. Uh, you yes. have uh, 60 seconds. Are you ready? I'm ready. Three, two, go. Did you is an iPhone app that asks you at the right time if you have done your task. Now you can argue why paying 99 cents when you have reminders available for free. The answer is simple. It's because Didju is more than a reminder. We need it more. Didju does two things. First, interactivity. A reminder normally will tell you, for, for example, 5 p.m. is time to go to the airport. Didju will ask you instead, did you take your passport? Did you take your e-ticket? Did you do this? Did you do that? You can answer yes, you can answer no. It's more dynamic. You can even send those lists to other people, like a mother through or her son, for instance. Second thing is the uh, pre-made list. You can minimize data entry by downloading pre-made lists online from the community for work, home, leisure. You can learn how to do things, just like on holo.com, for instance. That did you. Great, OK. Uh, great enthusiasm uh, and my, what did you think he was pitching, Tyler? Tell me what I, the I app is. I don't know, but I love his vibe. <laughs> He's got the enthusiasm. He's got the enthusiasm. Okay, but you didn't quite understand what the product no, did. No, I do. It, okay. it's just like let's pull up my iPad while Tyler's talking. I'm having here. a hard time believing the product is as simple as it was pitched. Okay, so here we go. Um, make a first aid kit, 14 steps, and it's just flashing by here. Uh, get a first aid manual, a notepad, and a pen. Yes, I did it. Keep the content organized. Yes, I did it. Uh, learn how to use everything in the kit. Yes, I did it. So step-by-step -step task yes. list. Now, yeah. I guess you make this task list, or maybe you download it from a library of task lists. Um, and here's exactly. all the categories. I, yeah. uh, cooking. Um, and I can make this uh, banana flambe. And I guess I'm going to get the steps here. And I click to add this list. Um, the activity is added. Now I can click on the 11 steps. Get butter, sugar, cinnamon, brandy. Yes, I did it. Get two bananas. I mean, I'm just basically going through a punch list. This is, I think, for a recipe, a little bit annoying, yeah. uh, this process. But I could see um, if I made, this is sort of like the rundown list I asked the guys at thisweekend.com to make. Exactly. Bring and me the rundown can... list. Is there a, who's got the copy of the rundown list? This, is, this could get yeah. ugly. Who's got the copy of the rundown list and out there? This is the, I and, said and to these guys. If have, uh, hold, hold on. Have iPad, you can send them the list. Right. Hold on, Armand. Hey, guys, where's the list, Matt? Carolyn is bringing it. OK, good. Now, I said, because you guys have heard me rant on the program. I'm like, hey, come on, where is this? Is this done? Is that done? Sometimes I got the sound off, and you can, you can see me going, like, what the fuck? 
and I'm like yelling and screaming because I want yep. the show to be good for the people who right. listen to it. Uh, and they give us our attention. So I said, hey, make a list for me, a rundown list, and then I want whoever's running the show just to sign off. Okay, we did this. We started this stream. We started that stream. Just so we don't forget anything. Yeah. Teleprompters up. So we, you know, because she's like a rundown list. I think that these lists are very important, especially when. Well, you, you uh, to his credit. Okay. You quite so often say, "Did you remember to do this? Did, did you? you remember to do that?" Right. So here we go. Here's the list. News. Each week, a guest comes in and delivers. News is only on Fridays. Five disturbing stories. Uh, news is gathered from these places. Show notes. Day of shoot checklist. Put show description on UStream page. At eleven. Twelve. Studio crew. Starts prepping and setting up studio. Print show notes. Put Jason and Tyler's in studio with their names on them. Put five copies in the magazine rack. Set up a Google Doc and share with Jason to use to feed him interview questions during the show. Ensure that IVGA is running on the studio laptop. 12.30. Get Tyler into makeup. Get Jason into makeup. Get Newsreader into makeup. Check that Will and Ben have guests called to do a Skype check. Go to meeting check. Uh, tweet that the show is going live. Uh, here's the Twitter username and the password. Include guest mention, a reminder of this weekend. On set, make sure AC is set to 69 degrees. One hot green tea caffeinated with a spoon of honey. One ice green tea with one Splenda. One glass, I mean, this is like the rider. Put drinks on coasters, provide Jason with a yellow pad and pen. I mean, this is insanity, but this is what makes a great show. It's this level of detail, and I think that's what you're trying to do in the app, correct, Armand? Uh, yes, yeah. Okay, so uh, you wrote this yourself, or did you hire developers oh, um, to do this? I, I hired the developers. I used to code myself, but for this one, I hired developers. And uh, where are you based? In Ottawa, Canada. Got it. Um, and so, again, in this one, we didn't hear from you a very personal, so I'm just, we're going to give you some basic feedback on how to make pitches better. Mm -hmm. One, there wasn't like a very compelling case of um, here is, I'll, I always make the following errors when I go to the airport. And that was a really good example that could have been built off because everybody has this experience. There are 10 things that I always forget when I go on a business trip. Yep. And so I made a list of the 10 things. Whenever I put in my schedule, I'm going on a trip, I run through this. And as I run through it, I remember, oh, I've got my laptop adapter. Oh, I've got my power, my international power adapter. And oh, I set my international phone for my iPhone on international. So these are, I call this number. These, it's these, like punch lists. These are pre-built punch lists. Well, it seems they could be. You could download one here, and they're in different categories. So hey, here is work, home, leisure. You know, here's all of them. And there are some of these lists, uh, which you know, I, I change like, attire. I like the idea of a teachers using this for their students or homework reminders and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I could see this as an application for people who, you know, like when you're a pilot and something goes wrong on the plane, by the way, we have to do another This Week in Docs, because I saw a Nova, and I don't know if Nova gets to count as a doc, but mm. there was a Nova on the Air France flight 447, I think, that went down mm. because the little airspeed indicator went off. Okay, we get about halfway through the movie, uh, the, the Nova episode, and they're like, by the way, this, this guy gets on who's like a career pilot and, you know, investigates stuff, he goes, Basically, uh, today, most pilots don't actually fly planes and have no experience flying planes at 35,000 feet, let alone doing any kind of emergency maneuver at 35,000 feet. And I just thought, wait a second. <laughs> did, and I rewound it. Did he just say that most pilots don't know how to fly a commercial jet? And the answer was yes. And they have no idea how to handle emergency procedures. So these guys, terrible tragedy on air flight, this Air France flight, the airspeed indicators got frozen over because of this very rare condition called liquid water in the atmosphere. They don't know how fast they're going. There's a very easy way to set your speed. And if you're 10 knots plus or minus, you're either going to go into a stall or you're going to have the plane vibrate and could possibly break up and then go into a different type mm -hmm. of stall. You have a very narrow range. All they had to do was put the throttle at 85% and put the pitch at 15 or something like that. And you basically have a 98% chance of having the plane in the right range. You're just fine. Mm -hmm. They have all these indicators going off, and they're so busy trying to deal with the indicators that they didn't do that very basic step. Mm -hmm. And instead, he just pulled the n handle up like a panic, when in, and it was slowing down instead of pushing forward to gain speed. And the plane just went into free fall, or possibly rolled, and then flipped over, and bam, wow. everybody dies. Because they don't know how to fly the planes, and a lot of these pilots don't actually. Yeah, so anyway, and now they're starting to put all of the manual manuals on iPad. So this idea of running through a punch list online for compliance reasons in an airplane or in a restaurant, like I could see a McDonald's them having this and you making a McDonald's app, uh, Armand, on this little notion that there are punch lists that need to be followed. There are detailed instructions. Now, if I was the manager of McDonald's and they said to me, hey, McJason, 
go through this punch list at one o'clock. And it just said like, beep, one o'clock punch list. Is the bathroom mm -hmm. clean? Okay, I went to the bathroom, boom. And I take a picture, boom, clean bathroom, correct. Oh, is the fryer really clean? Yes, boom, I took a picture of the fryer layer, it's clean, boom. You know, and like, mm -hmm. now I've got this audit trail. So there's something interesting here that you're tapping into, but I do think that your pitch lacked that great example, and you're building sort of a platform. So when you build a platform, it's very important for you to make crystallized examples so that people can understand mm -hmm. why it's powerful, because it, they tend to have a problem with it. And on the business side, you know, to-do apps are not really businesses, they're just right. sort of cool little fun features, yeah. uh, but it could grow into something else. So I give your pitch like a seven, and I give the idea like a six. But I think that you could shape this up and make it an eight or nine pitch if you verticalized it. Tyler, what did you think? I like the simple. Now you said you're going to be critical. You've been pretty kind. Yeah, um, I like the the simple kind of branding around it. Mm -hmm. Did uh, you? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you get a fun little logo and a fun little name that's real easy to remember. It's it makes it much more pers you've personalized the to do list so to mm -hmm. speak. By, um, but all your points are very valid. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you give it a score? Pitch? As a pitch, um, I think a lot was left out, and the product's better than the pitch. So, um, six? Yeah, six on the pitch. Sounds like you're at a six. And on the idea? Six. Yeah, idea. six, five, seven. OK. All right, so you are uh, uh, Armand Conan right below being in the game. You need to tighten up the pitch, and you need to tighten up the product so you can get yourself in the game. Get in the game, you got like a seven eights. Right now, you just right bang it on the ceiling there. I suggest you verticalize this baby. Let's make it more specific. Yep. Did you for parents? Or did you for recipes? And instead of trying to do recipes and parenting and business, let, let's try to do one thing and make it resonate with a small group of people, like mommy bloggers, like is a classic example of, of going after a vertical, uh, or auto mechanics. Make a, a did you for auto mechanics that takes them step by step through various procedures. Or maybe a did you for uh, gadgets and tech, maybe for tech support. There you go. How about a did you for Windows where it's just like, here's the top 50 Windows problems and here's the steps of what to do to solve them. Step one, step two, step three, step four. Did you reboot? Did you do this? Did you do that? So anyway, great job and uh, continued success with that, Armand. Thank you. All right, good, good luck with it. Let's uh, get the next picture set up, and I think we're going to go four this time. I don't know if we're going to get to five, unfortunately. Um, but I really do like how we're doing here. These are really great companies. Uh, I'm really great first-time entrepreneurs, it seems like, in almost all cases, uh, or second-time entrepreneurs, which I love. You love to see that. You love to see this is what America is about, Tyler. This mm -hmm. is America. Mm -hmm. This is America. This is what's going to get America out of its problems. Well, the last one was mm -hmm. Canada, but OK. Yeah, <laughs> Canada is the 51st state. <laughs> I wonder if Canada would let us join their union so we could solve our problems. They seem to have it on lockdown. Healthcare, the, well, the strong dollar, no debt. They didn't have that no whole debt. housing bubble thing in the whole. I know. Yeah. Well, everybody, I think everybody in Canada gets a free house because there's so much land. They just get. I think everybody gets an acre. I think it's like. I think they're on the metric system. I think they're using. Absolutely, yeah, they are. Meters and. Meters, yeah. Hey, uh, Ethan, are you there? Oh, oh, Randy. Sorry, yes. Sorry, I was ahead. Hey. Um, hey Randy, yeah. are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, uh, and you sound like you're in good shape there. You got your headset on, and oh no, slide deck. Boop, boop, slide yeah. deck. Uh -oh. Uh oh, now we're in trouble. I see the slide deck. What's the matter? Is this app built or is this slideware? Uh, Be honest. PowerPoint. <laughs> All right, so you got slide. This app is not built. Uh, actually, the app is built. It's just not live in the app store yet. Okay. All right. Uh, we will allow it. You have 60 seconds, and uh, you're going to uh, go ahead and hit play on your PowerPoint, I guess. And uh, then uh, when you're ready, you tell me, and I will count down. Uh, you ready? Look at okay. how nice, nice go-to meeting is with that HD yeah, face. Yeah, huh? sharp as sharp as all hell, man. This is like this is how I want to be presented to as an angel investor and as a you know founder pitching ideas. I love this. Okay, you ready? All good. Good to go. Three, two, go. All right, with Mobile Pay USA, we're going to turn your phone into your wallet. Now, we're uh, much more than a mobile payments company. Uh, soon, you'll be able to virtualize your coupons and rewards cards all through a single app. So let's show you how it works. First, you're going to log in with a four-digit PIN. Geolocation is going to pull up the nearest stores. Uh, we'll be in a yogurt store today. Go ahead and select a card. You're going to enter the register code and hit Pay Now. It's that simple. Now. 
after a purchase, you go to my account to view recent transactions or rewards earned. Now, features like this are nice, but what's really going to set us apart from NFC and 2D wallets like Google? Uh, security and scalability. With us, card data is never shared um, on the phone or, or shared with the merchant or stored on the phone, but it's securely stored by our banking partner. Uh, our universal solution can actually green light mobile payments for all of America with no new hardware or software. So get ready to ditch your cards and coupons as early as this fall. Okay, great. Um, interesting. It was a very stiff pitch. Mm -hmm. I think you probably okay. agree. Very scripted. Yeah, sure. Uh, and Tyler, and so uh, I felt like I was walking through a PowerPoint. Didn't seem as exciting as a, I'll just say, quote unquote, real pitch. Mm -hmm. um, Okay. And I'm a little bit concerned about the space, obviously, because so many people coming into it. Mm -hmm. And as we saw when we were in Korea and Japan, just swipe your phone on the NFC and you're done. Yeah. Sounds a lot easier to me than pulling up the merchant, uh, et cetera. Yeah. Now, um, so the pitch, I think, was kind of weak um, because it didn't have, like, a great... It, you, you, he went into why this was going to be better than those places, like mm -hmm. sharing your credit card. Mm -hmm. I think that that is not a major issue. I don't care if I share my credit card right. with anybody because I got a fifty dollar limit on my liability. Right. Yeah. If that. People aren't necessarily concerned with. That's what, not a what, concern what people have. I mean, people do. lose yeah. their wallets all the time. They report their card stolen four days later. We people have learned that it doesn't security on your credit card doesn't actually matter that much. As long as you're reviewing your statement, you're not going to get charged for this stuff. You 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 it's, it's it's factored into the whole payment system. So I don't think people feel like it's that much of an issue. I also he, he probably gets it from investors though, like non stop. What are you going to do? What, like Google what about Wallet. To, yeah. I, I, no, no doubt the first question you get is what about Google Wallet, and then your sure that's your top answer. The problem is is to the first person hearing the pitch who's not an investor. I also don't know that this is faster because I know when I'm in the Apple store and I just hand somebody a credit card and they swipe it through their machine or through a Square device when I'm at a lo like all these local events I go to now. They're charging five dollars at the door, ten dollars at the door for like a meetup. They just got a, they got a little square thing. They slide it. I don't need to take out my phone, load an app, or go to a web page. I mean, that just seems like a pain in the ass to me. It seems like more work. So anyway, I I feel like the pitch was very generic and it didn't inspire me and it was scripted. So. I, it wasn't good. I, it really needs to be tightened up. And I give it like a five. Okay. I give the business like a six. I'm just like, I, I feel like this is a business. I don't need this app. I'm really concerned about the, the angle. What do you think, Tyler? I think we, it's hard to Am say. Am I being too hard? I, you, 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 you surprised me a little bit. Yeah, I didn't necessarily think you were going to go there. I just feel like if you're going to be in payments in the, in the age of Square. Yes. Right? And in the age of Google Wallet. Yeah, you got to do. You got to bring something. This feels like a great pitch three years ago. Yes. This feels like a pitch that's out of sync with the market, but go ahead, Tyler. I want to hear your thoughts. I, my thought is when we're in Asia and Japan for, gosh, it must be coming on 10 years now where you pay with your phone at convenience stores and you literally pull it out and you just touch and you're done. Um, that we haven't had yet here except with the key, but it is coming and Google's doing it, but it's like, it's a tough one. You're, you're in a, you're in a, I mean, I think as you probably are well aware, it's what a tough spot to be in now that, what, what, how long have you been working on this when Google Wallet came out? When they announced, um, when yeah, they announced I, it, I know I, it's, I, not, I, it's not really out yet, but when they announced they were going to do it. How long have we been working on it? Well, yeah, um, yeah quite a, quite a while. Um, and, you know, I, I did over a decade of R&D and basically found all the barriers to merchant adoption were uh, they didn't want to replace the new terminals. They didn't want new software and, uh, and they're, they're tired of, uh, you know, being responsible for card data being shared. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they have a data breach, they, they didn't like that either. I, was, um, I think that, that's, to, uh, that's, be that's a better pitch. I, I like the hearing that, you know, it's like, here's the problem with payments today from the, Maybe it isn't uh, uh, your pitch isn't necessarily to the consumer side of this equation. It's more to the merchant side of the equation. Merchants really yep. want to get away from accepting physical credit cards, if at all possible. Yeah, and how does the merchant know that my payment is there? Do they have like their iPhone out on the other side and they just see like, oh, it got connected? Are you connecting over, you know, some Wi-Fi network or is it connecting over the internet? The transaction. How do they know the transaction is legit and consummated? Sure. 
everything's connected seamlessly in the back end uh, uh, using the existing payment networks um, and, uh, and connections uh, to the point of sale. So, uh, you know, we, we had a, our initial private beta is using a virtual terminal, which basically the merchant will uh, uh, submit a transaction um, um, to us and, uh, and then we'll send an approval back. Um, so it's, they'll get an approval on their point of sale system as normal. But so, no card, no card was needed, uh, and uh, no new terminal was needed, and uh, we have that universal solution I was telling you about that wouldn't require new hardware or software. So it's really uh, more scalable than uh, what Google and PayPal and uh, ISIS is a, is a network of. Uh, hey guys, are you watching my computer? Because I've just been zooming in for five minutes trying to get you guys to pull this up uh, while he talks. I'm trying to just so the guys know we're controlling the TriCaster. I'm trying to show video while. He's talking. That's why I was zooming back and forth. You guys got to get on it. Okay. And now it's breaking up. Why is it breaking up like that, guys? Guys, somebody talk to me in the control room. Hello? Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm losing my tech, guys. Yeah, here. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. So why does the video <laughs> not work, guys, like that? Do we know? Is that a TriCaster issue? Okay. So anyway, uh, for whatever reason, I'm, I'm trying to play your video, and your video shows in the video. I'll, I'll, I'll try to fast forward to it and then pause it. Um, she shows her phone to the cashier, and that's how the payment is consummated. Is that right? That's correct. Instead of um, how do they know that's card, not? Is there like a is there a number or something? How do they know that's not fake? Like I just have a, an image on the screen. Well, because the uh, the what what's happening there is the consumer is. Uh, is actually checking into the that store uh, when they enter their uh, their terminal ID. It's tied to that exact terminal, and uh, and so they, they they start with the app, tap on the store screen, make a payment, and uh, and when they show the store uh, the, the the store button, um, the transaction is authorized. Uh, it's sent off to um, our our server, and uh, it goes first, and it's waiving an authorization request for an approval from the merchant. I, I so when it. we show the green server. screen, the merchant hits a button, and then within two seconds, then we send it how off as a normal payment. How much time is it between payment, when, I uh, click my, when I click my, like, I want to pay $7 for this juice, how, how long between the $7 I'm going to pay for my juice and it coming up on their terminal? Uh, it, within two seconds. Oh, okay. all they, all, once you show the green screen, they just hit a button. Uh, they hit and a then, button and they query, the, like, are there any pending transactions? Is that... Um, yeah, the, the, uh, the, there's only one tra transaction at a time that will go through our system per terminal. Got it. Okay. So, uh, so, so yeah. Okay. We, so we worked around the problem, basically, around the hardware, uh, hardware problem. And, this, and there's a arguable benefit to the customer, but your, the real benefits are to the retailer. Is that correct? Well, there's multiple benefits to the retailer, but actually, I'd argue the uh, most of the benefits are going to be for the uh, for the consumer, because you know, like I pointed out in, in my in my slide deck, uh, but you're, we're but much more than just a new way to pay. But you're the, consu be able to get the your, consumer, uh, rewards the cards, your the con coupons. The consumer's not the one paying for this, right? The retailer's the one paying for it. They're paying retailer the merchant pays. fee. Yeah, but what yeah, he's saying yeah, is he's saying half of it is the payment, but the other half is getting rewards. Yeah. So getting some sort. But that's of a benefit to the retailer. No, it's a benefit to the consumer if they got if I check in five times and I get a free coffee. Give them that's a, my benefit. If you have a digital, it's a win-win. If you have a digital rewards program, that's a benefit to the retailer. It's also a benefit to the user because they, I come for the sixth coffee and it's free. The or I get a donut with my the, coffee if I've bought ten. The customer saves having a piece of paper in their wallet. The retailer ha gets more benefit than that. Oh, you're saying who gets more benefit? Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know that the benefit to the retailer negates the benefit to the consumer. No, it doesn't. Right. They're not. But they're I'm, not I sort of feel like that the payments. I think you may not win the payments war because because this requires somebody to install an app. That to me is like a hurdle that's too much. I don't think that's that too big of a hurdle. I feel like it is. I feel like I just want to take out my goddamn credit card and pay. I don't know that I'm going to be incented enough to take out my phone. I always feel like the payment part is a distraction from the couponing rewarding. And I would love to just see an iPhone reward system. We had one at launch last year. A lot of people have tried to do these rewards programs. I think the yeah. digital rewards programs is just like such a good 
that's a good idea. But I guess that would be Gowalla and Foursquare are going to have some sort of digital rewards. They already do when you check in a certain amount of times. Mm -hmm. Boy, I mean, you're in two of the most competitive play, uh, spaces, Randy. You're, you're trying to take on Square and you're trying to take on Foursquare. No, I mean, I, the Google Wallet is and incredibly and go, and Google aligned Wallet. with these uh, merchants. Tar no, the 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 products that he, the features it said that he's doing. Right. So in other words, you're saying he's facing stiff competition. Yeah, heck yeah, man. I mean, so I Randy, how, I mean, how do you deal with that with investors today when they say you're taking on Groupon, Foursquare, Square, I, I and hear what, Google? What was it? I mean, what is what are the meetings like right now for you? <laughs> um. I say I have no idea. No, um, <laughs> so no. Basically, it's the it's the combination of services. Um, uh, it's it's the connection, uh, uh, the payment connection we have to point of sale that's unique that we're going to own. And uh, so when we we could build a connection from uh, say a Micros or a Radiant, they build a uh, they add a mobile payment button to their system. They connect it to us, and. Instantly, we're connecting the mobile payments, loyalty, gift cards, and the Groupons. Hmm. Now, we don't necessarily have to do everything. Uh, we could actually partner with a Groupon or, or partner with a Facebook to push consumers, partner with a Bank of America to push consumers. Uh, merchant adoption, we're going to partner with bank card ISOs and, and ad agencies to, that already have relationships with merchants. I agree with that. And then have you been approached by POS systems that either want to resell or acquire or? Yes, we have. Um, we, we have a, uh, been approached by several. Uh, we have a couple that are in the process of integrating to us. And, uh, and we're also uh, in the process of, uh, you know, talking to a different payment network that, uh, you know, wouldn't require any new hardware yeah. or software, I, which, all right. you know. I, here, here's, give me your here, scores and let's move on. Okay. Because we got one more to do and we got it now. Um, pitch, I'm going to give... It was. I gave a five and a six. I, I'm I'm list. doing seven on the pitch. Really? Yeah, and I'm doing, I'm doing eight on the product. I actually think this is going to get acquired by. You have to realize that the POS systems out there. Yeah. Are cannot develop their own. That's ten bucks, and <laughs> not all of them. Some of them do. Some of them do. The, the newer ones are obviously. Yeah. The, these big ones, they're, you know, they have had this yeah. luxury locked in situation for decades now. And he's doing what they need, right? So yeah, I, yeah, okay. I mean, I I sort of feel like a company needs to stand on its own and have its own thing. Like I, I'm not a big fan of the build to acquire. I like the build to sustain and be a love product. Let's thank you so much for being on the program, Randy, and good luck with it. And let's thank get you. our last caller on the line, Ethan, for the final pitch of the day. Um, so far, we've had four. Uh, we just had um, Randy Smith from. MobilePayUSA.com, Armand from Did You, the uh, Taskmaster app, uh, and then we had Julian from Name Layer, the curated domain, curated domains for startups, and then before that we had Addison from Spoonfire, which was really easy online ordering for your local business. Which one was your favorite so far? Once again, Spoonfire, Name Layer, Did You, or MobilePay? Which one was your? Which one would you most want to? I, I, I love the novelty of name layer. Like mm -hmm. ha, you know, and we hear every freaking idea under the sun, and yep. just have not heard that one. Yep. So that's refreshing. Hmm. Um, best pitch. I mean, they all have their own. They all need to get together and help each other with their pitches. Yep. It's like the Armand had the energy right. that Spoonfire desperately needed. Spoonfire, you know, had elements that, you know, uh, name layer needed. Uh, they all. Put these. This is one of the things: is you, you put these four people in a room together, and you say, "Make one startup." <laughs> got a much better chance of success. <laughs> it's one of the thing that one of the trends that disturbs me is we have too many entrepreneurs chasing too many small ideas, and not enough collection of entrepreneurs uh -huh. creating big ideas. Ethan, are you on the line? Yes, I'm here. Great, Ethan. Uh, you know what to do. Are you ready? Yes. All right. So, Ethan, uh, I have uh, public beat uh, on my page right here. Uh, in three, two, go. Public Beat is a service for discovering and sharing local events. In any city, it is easy to find out about the major events, but to discover the hundreds of local things going on, like movies in the park and local shows, you must keep up with multiple websites and newsletters and look out for flyers on light posts. There's no default way to find local events online. Other event websites are focused on social broadcasting or on major event promotion, 
And as a result, local culture is under promoted and diminished. We solved the problem by helping you discover local culture with a huge collection of local events from across the web, social integration, mobile apps, and upcoming API, and more. We also offer embeddable widgets to power the calendar on your own website. Public Beat will make money by selling advertising, and because Public Beat receives strong organic search and social traffic, expanding the ecosystem is as simple as adding new cities. Okay, great. Uh, you did it in 52 seconds. Uh, Tyler, what did you think of the pitch for Public Beat? Um, clearly, a million people have tried or have addressed this issue, right? Right. So by you're you're posing the problem that we've heard a hundred times, which is it's hard to find events in your city. Um, I think you got to focus more on your differentiation and how you're approaching this. Right. Um, and, and and same with the other points. The personalization would have been nice. The yep. getting more emotional about the frustration on that point. Point. Um, yeah. Uh, so give it a score. Pitch an idea and the idea. I have to say the design looks quite nice. Um, it's got a good look. Yeah, and it seems like he has a clever idea for how to be more interesting and in finding interesting things to do in the city. Which is what? Um, you know, more culturally related stuff, and not yeah. necessarily just broadcast people spamming their events and. You know. So more curated is you think better. Right, and more culturally relevant, like uh, you know, uh, city-sponsored like cultural events and museum type. You know, yeah. I, pitch wise, yeah, not very inspiring actually. So it's you're you're in the six five category, and idea wise, mm, no, not that inspiring of an idea. Frankly, I said I was going to be a bit of, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was going to be a bit ornery. Um but nonetheless, your execution looks quite good. Well, okay, but let's just say uh, execution is not part of it. What is the right. business here? Is it what do you rate it? Gosh, yeah. Six-ish. Okay, so you give six six. I give the pitch a five. I felt like you you told me, just like you basically described it, any culture calendar, but there wasn't any differentiation. There wasn't mm -hmm. any hook. I need a hook. I need something mm -hmm. to believe in. I need something to be optimistic mm -hmm. about. I need to either see a problem I want to see solved. Mm -hmm. But what I I do see great execution. Here. Yeah. So I I that, gave that, it that. like I gave the pitch like a five to a six, and I gave the idea a six. I this is another one of those ones. Um, which I'll, I'll say was just like um, uh, Armand's uh, Did You app that we heard from earlier, the, the, the third pitch, which is you're, you're right on the ceiling of actually having something. You sort of like, you identified an area, you executed pretty well, and you had a decent pitch, but it didn't cross over into, hey, I am intrigued, I want to learn more, I identify with the problem, I, I'm, I'm, this is a really elegant solution to a problem. Where is the problem? What is the elegant solution? It didn't come together for me. Right. So in and all so we need to think about right now is what is a huge problem right. with these events? You know, and I, and I don't, you know, LA.com, I mean, I'm constantly looking at these sites, and my wife is constantly looking at sites for things to do with our daughter mm -hmm. now, 20 months old. Mm -hmm. And I, I got to tell you, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there to, to find these event calendars, mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of local competition from... Mm -hmm. You know, Brentwood News, Santa Monica News, mm -hmm. as well as LA.com, as well as City Search. Right. I mean, there are people, full-time editors, working on this. Right. I'm not sure how this business has any kind of specific uh, th advantage. I, not to be, I don't, I don't intend to be mean here, but the. Well, this is all about getting better, so it's not mean. Sure. It's all constructive. In terms of all of the um, kind of business ideas to tackle out there. Right. Um, this. Uh, this space is particularly crowded with a particularly low payoff for participating in this crowded space. Right. If you win, what do you win? Right. Right. It is, it is an issue. You have to think about that. It's not like it's a crowded beach. It's a crowded beach yes. with low waves yes. and dirty water. Yes. It's, it's a challenge. Um, hey, Ethan, why did you pick this as the space that you would go execute against? What was your problem? Um, you ha problem? Having said, and this is particularly, I asked this, you this question because you strike me as an intelligent fellow. You like, you're, are very articulate. You come off as, you strike me as very- Considered? In, yeah, you, you- Yeah, why'd you pick the space? Uh, the exact thing you described for how much local competition I think is the biggest problem. 
um, the fact that you have to follow all the alt weeklies, all the local websites. That's a lot of overhead for people. That's a lot of trying to stay in the know, stay informed. It's a lot of going different places, getting inconsistent information. There's no default way. I want to find something in my neighborhood near me, and I want to do it simply. Um, you'll end up going through four or five websites. You'll get six or seven daily emails. Um, it's a very, very fractured ecosystem for something people respond to very pleasantly. Um, you ask almost anyone, they want to be more engaged in their city, and they'll list five places they find out about stuff um, without much positive to say about all of them other than they technically have the data. So your premise is that because I have to go to LA.com, which I've pulled up here, because I've got to go to City Search, um, which seems to be crashing on me, um, and I've got to go to all these different places, that is the problem. That I'm, I have to go to too many places and they're not good enough? Is that uh, for consumers, on the other side, none of those places are doing anything for, for the small businesses. Uh -huh. um, if I'm a defense league for animals, if I'm any of these places creating these local culture, um, these are calendars, but they're not doing anything to let me take that and pull it back onto my own website, widgets, and then all the SEO power around that. They're not doing anything to let me get my events out there on the web other than throwing it up on their calendar if they do that. Hmm. There's no emphasis on treating the culture makers as publishers and getting their content in front of people and then getting people out into their city again. Hmm. Um, you might be too smart. You might be overthinking this one, uh, I think, if I may, um, Ethan. Looking at City Search um, and looking at what's popular there uh, and looking at um, uh, LA.com, pretty nice um, array of organizing uh, events. And then you have Upcoming, which is also really good, and Meetup.com. I, I do feel like there's a lot going on, uh, you know, around, um, you know, this space, but I don't think that you've given us uh, a product yet that, to me, says you are uh, solving a problem for me, the consumer, in aggregating across these the best of, and I, I need either some editorial hook or delivery mechanism or something. Because look, hey man, look at this meetup. I mean, meetup, lots of great stuff you can do in your town. Um, and they've basically over-serviced the people who are uh, running these events and have created an incredible uh, platform. And I know we had Scott Eiferman on the program. They do a great job. You, you know, LA.com, uh, Upcoming.com. You know, there are a lot of platforms out there that are doing uh, sort of interesting things. Uh, so, and Upcoming.com, obviously part of... Um, uh, Yahoo Now, and then what was the other one that was uh, for events, like the IMDb for events? Eventful, was it? There is Eventful, and Meetup is great. Um, anything on Meetup, on Meetup we would aim to have and let people know Meetup's a great source for this stuff. Um, we're trying to end the fracture. We're trying to help out the actual local culture makers, and then we're trying to distribute the stuff. We're putting out an API. We've got mobile apps. We let you take the stuff, put it in your own websites. Um, there's a lot of options, but none of them are treating the content as a, a web-wide ecosystem of events that you can just pull from. You, know you can target me, people with recommendations. You know what it reminds me of? What does it remind you of, Tyler? It reminds me of an all-hands meeting at an AMBT clinic. Insights from Tyler. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're saying this reminds you of an all-hands meeting at an amputee clinic. In other words, it's an all-hands meeting. There's a lot of players, and, and nobody's really... Got a handle on it. Right. I get it. I, I, this one is... I, I didn't know if we could pull, I rein this one in, but we, <laughs> I think we got this one. Okay. I mean, it may land like the Hindenburg, but it's going to land. Yeah. We got this one coming in. Um, I saw an incredible doc on the Hindenburg, like a recreation on Smithsonian, Smith, mm -hmm. Smithsonian Channel. I'm wondering if this week in docs... But I, how, how do you look at a space with, like, so many people have tried... Yeah, I mean, that's the... That's and, the so to, to no success. And, I, and you know what? I know the guy from Eventful, and he his whole idea or the, the, was to I mean, make it I all mean, api -able. I mean, So I, I think there is, an, there is an opportunity to say, we're going to make the IMDB, you know... I started uh, to take that back, because Meetup actually takes a whole sort of unique... Yeah, their, their thing is, we're going to service... And they really, we're servicing the organizers they, of the event. They, yes, and they then really, you have the they, curator yes. market, and then you have the tools market. You know, like which is you know mm -hmm. a whole other thing. Um, and, you know, and like the sort of the data spot of this. So, I I sort of feel like you're half 
so you, I believe you when you say you have the data piece and you're working on that. I believe you when you say you're curating and you have that. And then I believe you that you want to over-service the people who are creating these events. If you're going to over-service those people, you're going to be up against Meetup. If you're going to curate, you're going to be up against uh, LA.com, you know, all the local alternatives, City Search, et cetera, local magazines, New York Magazine, LA Magazine, whatever. And then if you're going to be the data side, you're going to be up against you know, the upcoming and the eventfuls of the world who are trying to do the data side of it. And I, trying to take on all three, which is sort of what you said, recipe for mediocrity, because you know, meetup.com has got 100 people working on this pro well, on one of the three problems. You're going to have one person work, or two people, three people working on it. You got to pick your fights here, um, uh, Ethan. And I'm not sure that you've done that yet. I would beg you, beg you, beg you to, to rein this in and figure out a, a little hill that is under service that you can over service. Like maybe strictly go for arts, like cultural arts, like uh, art art, like paintings and sculpture and, and just that piece. Or strictly go for music and try to over service and no, understand the, the that. Mu the music one's been beat. I know it's yeah. been beaten like a dead horse. Or maybe just go for kids and over service that. And the reason I'm telling you to do that is so that you kids can. Kids one could be great because those people got Well, the money. kids one is a huge yeah. winner. Yeah. Uh, and I think there's Babbel, but I think Babbel's more like national. But the same, I'll give you the perfect analogy. Curbed did not try to do everything all at once. Curbed started with just real estate. Then they bolted yeah. on, uh, okay, well, all these new restaurants are opening. Let's do a little bit of eater. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay, then there's shops. So let's add shops. But let's stop there. Food, like real estate's the anchor. And food involves real estate because people have to rent the store. And shops have to rent storefronts. So it was all like sort of, they cover food and uh, shopping uh, in a way that is related to where you buy your house and where you choose to rent your apartment or whatever. So I felt like they did a perfect job of verticalizing down to something where they could win. And that's what I feel you got to do here, Ethan. you got to tighten this up a little bit. And maybe being the platform when everybody's tried the platform over the last 15 years is not the right move. We could be wrong. What do you think? Well, we feel like our niche is local. Um, if you go on Eventful, Eventful is great, but they don't have a lot of truly local stuff. Most of what they do is partnered with Ticketmaster, partnered with Live Nation. Um, the stuff you find on Eventful is the stuff I hear about when I turn on the radio every day on commercials. Um, we're trying to own that niche of local, mm. things that are not put on by Live Nation or Ticketmaster. Um, someone in the chat said that things like personalization would be great. We do have alerts. We do have recommendations. Yep. Um, yeah. I, I always have a problem when an entrepreneur is talking about the faults of successful businesses as the reason why they're going to start another business. I would rather see you look to the customer base, understand a customer base and what they really need and want, not you're inside the bubble of events and you can you know it all so well that you've matrixed it, out, matrixed it out and you know all the shortcomings and all the cheating they're doing and all the way they're screwing over the users or all the way they're doing this or that. Forget about all that. Strip all that away, because all that is noise. That's just the industry speak. Narrow it down to the customers and, and really talk to them about what they want and what would make them delighted and come back every day. And I think you'll have a tighter presentation or pitch. This is a pitch that is the, not going to be successful with angel investors. No, no, I had the exact same thought, which is a, a, lot of, a lot of startups get based on personal pain points. and. If you're a coder, a lot of times that just you go right to uh, fire something up and start writing code. Do the do that in between piece rather than spend you know a month or two building something and then find out if people like it. You can go ask people, you know, hit the street really hard and make sure it's a real problem that people like beg you and say, yeah, in the middle of you asking, you know, would you use this? Have them if you you know you're onto something when they respond and say not only would I use this here's twenty dollars like I mean you know here's my card tell me the second it's ready yeah and yeah. That, that's actually the response we've gotten we spent a year in beta before we built this we've gone through four versions of the system um, mostly in our home market of San Antonio Texas mm -hmm. um, and we've had nonprofits and small businesses um, very proactively come in to get involved with what we're doing. So, after we got to a certain point of figuring out. And what do they want to get out of it? What, what, what do they love about it? What's the feature they love? They love the fact that they're not going on the mainstream media competing with the mainstream events. When you're trying to host a, a small park fundraiser or something like that, 
Um, you don't want to be sandwiched between you two coming to town. You want to be in front of an audience of people who care about local. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm going through the sign-up process, and it's telling me to follow the Hollywood Bowl and the Hollywood, you know, the Highlands Hollywood and the House of Blues. Those are like the Ticketmaster kind of places. Um, I'm into drinking and family. Drinking with my family. The execution's awesome, by the way. It's good looking, yeah. Thank you. This is and like, you're obviously a bright dude. It's. Thank you. I, I know. I'm. I'm. We're rooting for you. It's just. It's. It's. it's it's yeah, a, like it's, as, it's right now. It's recruit. It, right now, it's recommending for me, Taylor Swift and Hollywood Sheriff presents Evil Dead, Herrick, Neil Turbin's Death Riders, and Witch Haven, House of Blues, and Stable Sons. Because I guess I followed those two. Um, and for children, I don't think you have any data. Yeah, no data in Los Angeles. Where are you getting the data from? You're waiting for people to plug it in, or are you scraping it from other places? We are aggregating with very clear referrals, and we're trying to work with everyone we're getting referrals from to let them know and get their permission. Um, LA is one of our newer markets, so yeah. it probably doesn't have as much data. Um, yeah, I, I just switched over to San Antonio, and I see there's some more stuff going on. Yeah. Hmm. Free movie night. The, Go the Goonies. Very good. Um, all right. I, I feel like you're close. I, I, I'll be honest, I wouldn't invest in it yet. I feel like I, I would need, if I was like, as an, if I put my angel investor hat on for a second, I would need to feel like, what is their, what is their hook? What, is their, what, is their, what are they going to do better than anybody? Yeah. And you know, here's, a, here's some trends for you to think about. Social, video, crowdfunding, um, and um, those are, and uh, mobile. Those are some of the big trends. I always like to look at the big trend and then apply to an old vertical. So what does crowdfunding do to the event space? What does mobile, mm -hmm. social, and video do to the local space? What are any of those two things combined? Is there a video crowdfunding opportunity for you here? This, this is a great lesson, by the way, which is there's tons of things that didn't work, like event stuff. Yeah. And then mobile comes out. And now it's time to try it again. Absolutely. And it works in and that And video context. comes out. It's time to try it again with right. video. And crowdfunding comes right. out. Try it again. So all these new trends are there. And I feel like you haven't, I mean, if it was me, I would pick one of the emerging trends that you know is resonating with people. Now, check-ins are saturated. So you're going to stay away from that. But crowdfunding is not. Maybe crowdfunding plus eventful is interesting. You know, it's mm -hmm. sort of like Meetup is not right. Kickstarter, but Kickstarter is not doing events necessarily. They have some event-like mm -hmm. stuff in there, but hey, maybe you it's help. Almost like, it's like Meetup with money. It's like who wants to get together well, and I mean, do and this then crazy you have, thing? Uh, you know, what a great job Eventbrite is doing at tickets. So you, 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 you're in a, there's a lot of signals that there's something going on in local events. Groupon, obviously. Andrew Mason's pitch on this week at Startups was, hey, discover your city. You're saying something exactly the same, but you're going with it with the old tools and the old model, which is the web. I, I kind of feel like maybe if you reboot this and start with some hook that solves somebody's problem in a big way, it could break out. But hey, listen, every entrepreneur who spends a year or two in a space, you know, they get the opportunity because they're in the game to pivot into something that could break out. This has been an amazing episode. Thank you, Ethan, for participating. Thank you. Everybody check out Public Beat. Um, okay, so just right off the top of your head, Tyler, um, public beat, mobile pay, uh, and uh, well, giving two awards. Did you one for name pitch layer and, and spoon fire? Which ones did you like? Which one was your favorite? Which one's your pitch or idea? Or? Well, let's just go with which one was your favorite and which one was your runner up, and I'm going to write down mine, and then we're going to compare, and I'll guess yours and you guess mine. All right, da da dee, da da da. Yeah. What, what are we? What are we? What are we thinking? On, uh, we'll what, give them a table. Basis? We'll give. A, oh, if we were giving a table, we'll give somewhere? a, we'll like give a table to the top winner, uh, and if it's the same winner, yeah, oh. we'll give them a table at the launch conference on in March. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm picking yours first. Okay. Okay. You have yours? I do. Okay. Tell me what I picked as my number one. Your number one was Spoonfire. Uh, incorrect. What was my number two? Your number two was Spoonfire. 
<laughs> it wasn't you said it was not your number one. Okay, Spoonfire was my number two, but okay, okay. So what's my number one? Okay, there we go. Uh, <laughs> your number one was Name Lair. Correct. Yeah, my name. And I put your number one as Name Lair and your number yep. two as Mobile Pay. Correct. Did I get it right? You did. Oh, wow. Okay. So that means Name Lair is a sweep. Uh, name Lair gets a free table at the event. And, uh, spoon and let's just give each of the founders here um, two tickets to the event. Okay, Carolyn, can you let them know that they get two tickets to the event? And then Name Lair gets a table at the event. Um, awesome. I, what a great I, I, show. I'm curious to see what that evolves into. That could be really cool. Which one? Because the whole buying domain. Finding Lair. a domain is bad enough. Yeah. But the whole process of negotiating domains, yep. if you can make that simple, yep. holy smoke. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Hey, everybody. Thanks a lot for doing this. Go to meeting. Thank you. If you want to join the contest to win a free laptop and a uh, HD camera, go ahead and sign up and use the co promo code START, S-T-A-R-T, and email your receipt. Just hit forward and forward it to contest at thisweekend.com. Hey, and if you cancel, you cancel. That's understandable, but you still get entered into the contest. So go ahead and sign up. No risk. Uh, contest at this weekend with your receipt, your email receipt, and we will put you into a drawing for the MacBook Air. And last time we did this, I think 200 people uh, actually, 200 of the loyal fans for the show actually subscribed. So if 200 people do it, you got a 1 in 200 chance. That's pretty darn good. Um, and uh, this, it might only be 100 this time. Okay, thanks everybody. We'll see you. Oh, and thanks Hiscox. What a great job those guys do. Uh, everybody thank Hiscox on their Twitter account. We'll see you all next time on This Week in Startups. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you. And then what about the switching? We're having a little switching problem. We played the promo for the network promo. Okay. Okay. Um, and then switching. Was somebody not paying attention when I was doing it now? Who, who is your... Yeah, so when they're talking, and I'm showing their screen. You want to put them picture in a picture so we have a try cast. So you guys are leaving the picture of them up when we have an opportunity to have both pieces of data, them and their video. So you want to go for the both pieces when you can. Yeah, six to seven, right?